here, allow me to blow up your current understanding of generalized anxiety disorder and PTSD and borderline personality disorder and maybe ADHD too. By the end of this quick take, I hope to help you rebuild it somewhat. Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. As you know, in the DSM-5, mixed states became a specifier that can be added to a diagnosis of unipolar depression, effectively creating a spectrum approach to the diagnosis of mixed mood disorders. But the DSM manic symptoms allowed for mixed depression were confusing. Here are two papers that simplify things. First, the CANMAT and ISBD recommendations paper. They present a spectrum approach to mixed states, figure four if you're checking. Rather than thinking about bipolar disorder like the North and the South Pole, think of plotting symptoms on a graph. Number of manic symptoms on one axis, number of depressive symptoms on the other axis, so that full manic and full depressive symptoms would be in the upper right-hand corner of the graph. That was the DSM-4 version of mixed states. But in the CANMAT, the entire territory of the graph is mixed. Any admixture of depressive and manic symptoms is possible. They're inviting you to forget the DSM rules about what manic symptoms count and which don't, and instead focus on the most common manic symptoms found in mixed states. Combining his findings with earlier research on mixed states, Roger McIntyre calls these the four A's, the most clinically important manic symptoms in patients with a mixed depression. Ready? They are agitation, anger, anxiety, and attention problems, like can't concentrate, thoughts going all over the place. Seen any patients lately who had depression plus a couple of those four A's? Agitation, anger, anxiety, and attention problems. Well, of course you have, because these are common symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder and PTSD and borderlinity. The attention thing invokes ADD. So does the patient have major depression plus ADD or a unipolar mixed state? Is it major depression plus generalized anxiety disorder or a unipolar mixed state? And so on. How are you supposed to tell these apart? I submit to you that it's basically impossible. The overlap in symptoms is just too extensive. It's as though you've been lied to all this time by being told that these are separate conditions that can be identified by DSM rules. That's just false. True, some people have so much borderlinity, it's almost unmissable. Desperate attempts to avoid abandonment and chronic emptiness, you can just feel it. But the rest of the borderline criteria overlap almost 100% with depression plus the big four. So there's the mess I promised you. Now to clean up. What if you just accept that you can't differentiate these things and focus instead on your treatment options with an eye toward first do no harm? A patient presents with depression and all four A's. What are you going to do? If it's psychotherapy, exercise, fish oil, helping them develop a regular sleep pattern closer to the sun's rhythm, fine, go for it. The crux is antidepressants. That's when you need to know, could this be a mixed state? Because antidepressants can induce mixed states and make them worse and make them treatment resistant. So how can you tell if it's a mixed state? Not from the symptoms, right? No, instead you need the other four dimensions of the bipolarity index that I discussed in the last quick take, 52.1. Remember, those are family history, age of onset, course of illness, and response to treatment, mainly an energized negative reaction to an antidepressant. Use the mood check questionnaire to gather that information quickly and easily document that you did. Finally, here's an even more common conundrum. The patient presents with depression and three or four of the four A's, agitation, anger, anxiety, or attention problems, and they're already on an antidepressant. Now you have to wonder, could the antidepressant be inducing a mixed state? Is it possible that instead of adding anything, the best solution might be to gradually taper the antidepressant? In the latter part of my career, I was being referred patients with terrible mood and anxiety problems who had tried everything. But I almost always had at least one treatment offer that they'd never had. 
keep what you've got and gradually taper the antidepressant. If it doesn't work, at least you'll be on one less medication, I'd say. A resident and I published a case series of 12 such patients whose anxiety diminished substantially with this approach. It was so commonly effective, it became one of my main treatment options as nearly everyone arrived on an antidepressant. But unfortunately, that's all the data I've got to support this strategy. In summary, mixed states are dimensional. Any admixture is possible. And the four A's are clinically the most important. Agitation, anger, anxiety, and attention problems. Diagnostically, it's disastrous, but treatment options are not as complicated. You just gotta wonder, could this be a mixed state?